You just wait until my gravy's dribbling down your chin. Smut! Roast beef this good should be illegal. Mm. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to make any roast beef tender and moist. Smut! So just sit right back, grab a drink or two, and let's get into it. Um, by the way, subscribe and do all that crap. Cheers! For this cook, we need roast beef and any cut will do. Any cut. I'm not gonna go and name every cut of roast beef that you can buy. Just get it out of the fridge an hour before you need it. Now you do wanna trim off any silver skin because this is just chewy and does not eat well. Eww. For those wondering, I'm using topside beef. It is a leaner cut from the thigh of the cow. So no intramuscular fat. And as always, I grabbed it from Gippsland Premium Meats. Thanks, Mick. Today, I'm going to be using a 57 centimetre Weber kettle, and I'm going to be utilising the snake method. Why? Because I want to be cooking at 150 degrees Celsius today, and how I'll do that is by carefully stacking briquettes into the Weber to form the snake. Taking your time to make it as neat as possible. Then I'm going to add 14 briquettes to a chimney starter. I'm going to light these up. Once they're all ashed over, I'm going to dump them on one end of the snake to act as a fuse. I'll then sensibly put the grill back in. Now, if you don't own a Weber kettle, any hooded barbecue will do. Just follow my times and temps. I mean, you could reach out to Weber. They might sponsor you because they're sure as hell not sponsoring me. Then grab a heavy duty pan and put it over a high heat. Add in some oil and some butter. Once we're reading 200 degrees Celsius and above, we're ready to sear. Now it's time to add the beef. We are now searing the outside and this does a couple of things. It gives the roast extra flavor and your neighbors can smell it and it drives them wild. Suffering your jocks, Trev. Just kidding. I actually like Trev. And we're just going to keep turning it until it's all seared. Oh, look at that colour. By searing meat or creating that outer crust, this is known as the Maillard reaction. This is a chemical reaction in the presence of heat between amino acids and reducing sugars, resulting in browning food and a fresh aroma and lovely flavours. Now once the roast is seared all over, we can move it back to the grill, but we're going to keep it away from the lit fuel. Next up, you want a packet of French onion soup, and you're just going to toss that all over. Then add a cup of beef stock and about a quarter of a cup of water. Now they are the very minimum things you want to add. Beyond this, it's personal preference. A splash of red wine, some black pepper, even add a garlic clove or two. And then we're just gonna cover this with foil. And we all know what that means. It's gonna retain all that moisture and it will stay juicy. I mean moist. Smut. Ooh, beer. I mean, holy water. Then pop the lid back on, opening the lid vent, and making sure that lid vent is on the opposite side of our lit fuel, and closing the bowl vent down about halfway. And we're gonna leave that alone for three hours. Now you could add an ambient temp probe to track your temp, or you could grow a pair, trust me, grab a drink, and go and enjoy your afternoon. Cheers. Today, I'm using a mixture of direct heat and indirect heat. And all up, this cook's gonna take around three hours and 10 minutes. Well, for those of you who like to use my beer timer, you're looking at a seven beer cook. Cheers. Now, could this cook be done inside in the oven and on the stove top? Of course it could, but where's the fun in that? Our neighbors won't smell the lovely aroma coming from our barbecue. Will they, Trev? The roast has been braising away for three hours, so it's time to get it out. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, foil. I mean, how good does that look? And so we just get it out of the Weber now, and that's it. No, it's not. If you've watched me enough times, you know we've got to rest our meat. Change of gloves. Now, just grab the roast out of the pot, pan, or bucket that you cooked it in, and we're just gonna rest it on a chopping board and utilize that foil. We're just going to let that rest. And this 1.5 kilogram roast is going to be resting for 
15 minutes. The general rule for resting meat is one minute per 100 grams. Trust me, I'm a sort of science type thingamajiggy guy. Ta-da! This is a tender roast. Now just grab a knife, the bigger, the better. Now, just slice up that roast. Now we just need to drizzle over that pan juice. Or gravy if you want to sound all fancy. Yes, I turned the pan juice into gravy. Didn't think you needed to see how to do that. Well, here you go. You want to strain out all the pan juice first. And then to each cup of pan juice, I'm using two. And to the pan juice, we want to make a flour slurry. So you want two tablespoons of plain flour for each cup. Add a little cold water and stir with a fork. And that's the consistency. I like the slurry like a batter. This is just gonna stop you getting any lumps when you add your flour to your pan juice. While your pan juice is over a low to medium heat, we're just gonna keep adding little bits of the slurry and whisking it in. And you'll see it thicken up. And then just add that glorious creation to a serving jug. 